21. <clears throat> Should I behave in such a way as this, then whether <clears throat> harmful people or even it's the midst of women, and I added or men because of what you said, the steady effort to control myself will not decline. Mm. So if you control your anger and subdue your attachment and have mindful alertness and you're still around difficult people, you'll enhance your practice. Yes. More. Yes. So yeah, the long as you have this uh, 19 and the 20 that practice, then this 21 is no problem. So you can handle the anger, you can handle the attachment. Yeah. Mm. That too is there. So we need to be thankful for those people. <laughs> yes. Okay, so the next then. Debe corner, Debe corner. Uh, 22 is it is better to be without wealth, honor, body, and livelihood, and it is better to let other virtues deteriorate rather than ever to let the virtues of the mind decline. And focus on controlling the mind. The um, look at where you're putting your energy in and the things that will, the things, if you spend too much time focusing on temporary things to make this life good and the virtues um, and the, uh, the praise in this life, that's definitely a, a waste of time. What are real virtues? You know, real virtues are training the mind and um, focusing your entire life on the benefit of others. Mm, great. Yeah, so anyone have any comments? Everyone okay? It's, that is uh, easy to, but not that hard to understand, but it's hard to practice too, because we have desires, attachment, and we don't let go easily. It's a uh, uh, word, we cannot go easily, honor, livelihood. So that is so important, like ordinary people, right? So, so strongly desire attached to that, not easy to let go. But these practitioners uh, who recognize future lives, then there who understand and cause and the effect that person like I think easy to handle this part. So then that person is taking care of the mind, not the other part. Yeah. Okay, so then 32, 30, no 23, sorry, 23. 23, Debe, another Debe. <laughs> Debe B. <laughs> Debe B. Uh, 23, oh, you who wish to guard your minds, I beseech you with folded hands. Always exert yourself to guard mindfulness and alertness. So um, he's, he's just saying the uh, primary instructions. He's saying in order to practice and is mind, the main practice is mindfulness and alertness. And if you practice that with your Dharma, your Dharma will then be successful. And he's also saying, I respect all who wish to guard their mind in this way. So he's, he's bowing down to everyone who's willing to take this up and, and attempt to practice in this way. Yes, it's 
Nanti dia bawa bodong tu you. Oh, ya. 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 So now he's kind of saying, "Hey, you know, this is the this is it. This is the pith instruction. This is what you got to do." He's told you why. <laughs> now he's telling you this is it. Yes. So that sentence is a uh, is a kind of like introduction. Then it's more intensely hearing the more teaching about uh, mindful guide. Mm. Okay, twenty-four cartes, please. Okay, yes, sir. <clears throat> well, let me bring it up. Um, go to someone else, please. I've, I'm having trouble getting my text up. Okay, so fun, please. Yes, Kenpo. People who are disturbed by sickness have no strength to do anything useful. Likewise, those whose minds are disturbed by confusion have no strength to do anything wholesome. Mm -hmm. So he's comparing uh, the physical illness. Uh, people are deplete with energy, therefore they cannot do anything when they're sick physically. So uh, when you are ill mentally or being confused, uh, you will not be able to do anything or solve anything or see anything clearly because it's clouded by confusion. Yes. Is that right, Kempo? Oh, yeah. So anyone has any comments? Everyone okay that? If your mind is not really controlled, it's <clears throat> Do you have a power or no? No, right? So we, we, if we get something sick and then we don't have a strength, right? Our body. Okay, so that's good Peter is talking too. We understanding very clearly. Uh, Mary, please, can you read the next? 25. <clears throat> whatever has been learnt, contemplated, and meditated upon, but those whose mind lack alertness, just like water in a leaking vase, will not be retained in their memory. Uh, well, this one is, uh, I think, fairly straightforward. The leaky vase concept is not unknown to me. <laughs> so your alertness is what helps you put your uh, things not just to listen to them, but actually and understand them and keep them in mind so that you can constantly practice. Yes. So do you have that problem, Mary? Yes, of course. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm the original leaky face. I have a big hole at the bottom. <laughs> So your voice is uh, licking or no? Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm, so I plug one hole and all the rest pop up. <laughs> yes. So I think this uh, everyone has this problem, right? Correct? Or about uh, Mary Lane? Forget or no? I forget. So many things, but then there's other things that I never forget. <laughs> but yeah, stuff goes in one ear and out the other often. How oh, about Sandra? Yes, of course. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd answer your questions perfectly every time. <laughs> <laughs> so otherwise, we are easily like professional, right? We are easily become the, the realizer. 
if we not forget, not happening like this problem. Okay. I think I might be enlightened by now if I wasn't such a leaky vase. <laughs> what is leaky vase? Obviously, my vase has been leaky for many, many lifetimes. <laughs> So what are you going to do? remember the negative things that happened to me more clearly than all the positive stuff that I should remember. So we can licking negative things too, right? Licking the positive and the licking the negative. So then we don't have a both. That's, it's a, that's also good to comparing to all the hoarding, the negative. Negative yeah. is licking and the positive is all licking. So that's not good. But we, we can licking both. Yeah. You know, like in the practitioner can be licking both. But then practitioner, I think, uh, licking the negative, not licking the positive, right? Mostly ordinary, regular beings, usually mostly licking is positive. Yeah. Yeah, we can licking both, but then slowly we hold the positive. Okay, 26, 26, uh, Tom Wazani, please. Even those who have much learning, faith and willing perseverance will become defiled by a moral fall due to the mistake of lacking alertness. Mm. So if, um, If we um, develop a hole in our uh, leather shoe and don't notice it, it um, could um, become a much larger problem. So remain alert at all times. Yes. So we study laws, we study and uh, so we study laws, so we have we have effort, we have effort, but still the problem is licking, right? So that is actually our our problem, mostly our problem. We study laws and uh, listening laws teachings. Then we have a devotion. We have a effort because we put effort and time to listening teaching contemplate, meditate, but not much impact, not much change, transform. So what happened? The problem is, is uh, uh, the mistake of liking illness. Then that brings defied by moral fars. So that's uh, actually Shantideva already give this uh, Similar is before, if someone does uh, broken vows and mistakes and uh, create negativity and then they do confessions, restoring again, and then broken again, restoring again, does like that, very hard to reach Buddhahood, right? So that kind of similar is here is like, even we listening teaching, we contemplate, we have a devotions, we have a passion, we put effort, but no much effect practice, no much transform, no get much result. The problem is because lacking illness, due to that, we create negativity. Yeah. Important words for us. This this 25, 26 is we have to think about again, again, because we are study, we are contemplating, we are meditating, practicing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now next, uh, 27 EDG, please. The beads of uh, an alertness in following upon the decline of mindfulness will steal even the merits I have firmly gathered so that I shall then proceed to lower realms. 
Mm. So if you're not mindful or or alert, alert, you lose your focus and your your strength will decline, and the end result could be ending in the lower realms. Yes. So the TV. The thieves of unalertness. Does it make sense or no? Yes, if we're talking about there's there's many things. I guess you know defilements, uh, not not living properly. I mean, there's a lot of things that come into play that are end up being distractions from from uh, losing your focus. Yeah. And mindfulness, if you will. Yeah, the thief of un Unalertness. So unalertness is the same as a thief come into your mind and stealing all the, your virtuous deeds. So this emotion is the same as a thief, right? You think so? Because Absolutely. We don't recognize when they're into our mind. <laughs> they're nipple it, right? Nipple it. So we need uh, we need the security card security I think. So otherwise the TV is coming easily. They take all the virtuous deeds. We do so hard work, put so much effort. Then these emotions take all the, our virtuous deeds qualities. We cannot happen like that, right? Yes, so you work so hard, you create a lot of special in your home, then TV take away everything. So what are you going to do? You upset? Are you asking me? You know, you, you recognize that you you're, that you're, you could get upset. Mm. So you're paying attention to, to everything that's going on. Yeah. So we have this problem. So I have this problem. I think everyone has a problem, right? Anyone who don't have this problem, raise the hand. <laughs> I think everyone except. So everyone except Shanti Devas. He is very happy. He be very happy. <laughs> okay. So now next, uh, twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Send up, please. This host of thieves who are my own disturbing conceptions will search for a good opportunity. Having found it, they will steal my virtue and destroy the attainment of life in a happy realm. So I think this is really just like 27. Um, and I guess it's why you need to be alert because um, they, they're good at finding opportunities, right? I mean, yeah. we can get triggered so easily by things. They take the, the opportunities, so then who is the loser? <laughs> I am, we are, yeah. Lose for what? Our virtue, lose our virtue, lose a future uh, good rebirth, uh, mm. you know. Yes, see, that's why this, see, it takes like uh, having fun. yeah, it's the and destroy the attainment of life in a happy realm. That's the problem, right? The more problem the thief, ordinary thief, just take away maybe your something special object that take away our car or something like that, but that cannot put us in the lower realms and they cannot destroy the liberation, uh, future happiness, but this emotion is more dangerous than that, right? That takes so all our future life happiness. Okay, make sense or no? Yes, okay, so now it's then 20, 29, EVR please. 
Therefore, I shall never let mindfulness depart from the doorway of my mind. If it goes, I should recall the misery of the lower realms and firmly reestablish it there. Mm -hmm. So we do everything we can to be mindful. Um, and when we realize that we're not being mindful, we come back because we have that visceral fear of um, being drugged down to the lower realms when the, when the thieves um, instantly appear when that mindfulness is lost. Yes. Everyone agreed? Okay, right? Easy to understand. So we have to really put the um, security, like same as a lock the drawer. So we have to block the cannot come into our emotions, our mind. So that's what we have to do through the mind for illness. Okay, so then next, uh, uh, Amanda, please, 30. Habits and through fear, I'm beautiful. Um, it didn't hear the, the, the topic. Uh, Amanda, can you hear? Yes, can you hear me? Yours is uh, like kind of a ghost way, and uh, we didn't hear. Yeah, your internet is not strong, I think. Do you, do you want me to wait? Or do you want me to, to read it uh, now? Uh, one more. Is it, is, okay. Um, can, through staying in a company of spiritual masters? Is that any better? Yes, it is. Yes, okay. All right. Thank you. Through staying in the company of spiritual masters, through the instructions of abbots and through fear, mindfulness will easily be generated in fortunate people who practice with respect. Um, I, think, I think this is really beautiful. Um, it's how to maintain mindful alertness and under what conditions does it flourish. Um, so through our spiritual teachers, the Buddhas, and our Sangha, um, if we rely on them, our sp spiritual guides, then, um, then they'll lead us, of course. And um, if we think we can practice on our own, we lose that mindful alertness and it's hard to maintain um, alertness. Um, so I think we have to watch our own pride with this. Um, and uh, also having fear of the lower realms and then mindfulness is generated. And so fortunate people are those who have the good accumulation of merit and who can practice with Sangha and, and a teacher. Um, and uh, the Nando practice is, is really important for this as well. Um, uh, because if we, if we get, um, if we lose our effort and we get a wrong view, um, then it becomes obstacles and it makes our practice very hard. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so anyone has a comment that it's a great word, right? Important. So anyway, it's a guideline, you know, we need this. I have a question on that. When when you're traveling and you don't have the internet or you don't have a monastery or whatever, how, how do you maintain the connection with the spiritual masters? Oh, the connect with spiritual masters, maybe like at least awakes is you just then you know monthly. Not no not every day with it, but it's just at least awakes, you know, listening teaching or or must be like monthly, you know, listening something, teaching and followed by the uh, the instructions, teachings, practice. So can you maintain a connection with the meditation? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. Mm. 
All right, thank you. Yeah, so then until the like we have inter independently, you can practice yourself. So then until that, have to rely on the teachers and the Sangha. So independently practice means then like think about the, uh, okay, easy to share, like think about Malarepa's story. So when he meet Marpa Lotsa and purify all the karma and hardships after Mala, Marpa Lotsa give him teachings, then Marpa Lotsa, he didn't send him to back his home. So he kept there him and put in the meditation retreat. And then same time he giving all the time teachings, teachings for him. So until Malarepa is like can be independently, he can with, without the teacher so he can practice, meditate. He's not going to lose his practice. So that's Marpa Lhosa recognized until that he kept him there. So like that. So then uh, Marpa Lhosa, not every day meet Malarepa, not everywhere. I don't think so. Every, every month they meet together, but just anyway, he kept him there. And when he giving teachings, like after maybe monthly, sometimes, you know. And during that time, Marpa Lhosa also went to India too. When Malarepa is, was his place. But during that time, Marpa Lhosa went to India. It takes years to come back. So Malarepa stay his Marpa Lhosa's place. Okay, so now next. Uh, oh, is name your you didn't have a name, David. <laughs> no name David. <laughs> David, can you chant this? 31. You say yeah. Ikepo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your name come back. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have you very small. <laughs> okay. Let me go back again. Okay. 31, no? Yes. Okay. I am ever dwelling in the presence of of all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas who are always endowed with unstructured vision. Uh, what I understand, Kempo, is that uh, be connected with the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas uh, in his presence, uh, you're going to have the opportunity to avoid have uh, obstruction of, of, of you know, you're going to have a good vision about the practice and you're going to have the support from them. Have mm -hmm. that connection with them always. And, yeah. Yes. Okay, so we just uh, always think Buddha is, Buddhisattva is in, always with us, yeah? Yes. And that's for doing great, great, positive. I know that you repeat it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that we have to maintain that mm -hmm. that positivity, that connection in all our actions and daily activities and yes. where, whatever we are in the work, in the house, whatever. Yeah. To maintain that channel connected, you know, yes. with our radio station. Yes. Yes. Anyone has any comments for that? Everyone okay? That's his easy one. But that's a yeah. good instruction. <laughs> We always can think about that. And uh, we have to remind them Buddha is with us. Uh, so 32, 32, Thomas. Yes, Kempo. By thinking in this way, I shall mindfully develop a sense of shame, respect, and fear. Also through doing this, Recollection of the Buddha will repeatedly occur. By having this mindfulness and thinking that the Buddha and the Bodhisattvas are always with us, you should have a sense of shame and fear. If you don't think, sh 
shame and fear and respect develop mindfully, the recollection of the Buddha will really occur. Mindful alertness will be developed. So visualize Buddha and the spiritual teacher. Yes. Okay, great. Mm. Um, I have a question. Yes. I kind of, I mean, I understand the main point, but just the verse itself, I feel like it's saying, by remembering the Buddha, you will develop, you'll, be, you'll develop your mindfulness. And through this, you will remember the Buddha. <laughs> like, I, I kind of don't understand the verse itself. So, which you mean the words could directly? It's like a sandwich. It's like a sandwich. By remembering the Buddha, you will develop mindfulness, and this will help you remember the Buddha. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know the English instruction how to go. Yeah. The Tibetan is uh, the put very beautiful. Mm. So, yeah, it's hard to this kind of like poetry is translation to English to put the, all the meanings there correctly. So no easy, but words is there, but you don't really get the what actually sometimes like talking about. Yes, Ivia? I see another way of reading it. I think it's tied to the 30, 31. And yes. I, to me, it sounds like it's, um, it's an attitude, um, day, like a meditation or attitude that you can carry with you throughout your day. Um, I like dwelling in the presence of the Buddhas and Bodhisattva. So you're feeling them with you always with unobstructed vision. So you're trying to feel them with you like your teacher has shown you. And then you mindfully develop, as you think of that, you develop for yourself as you try to become more like them, a sense of shame and respect and fear, which helps maintain that alertness. And um, then you're going to keep remembering them and that view that your teacher has shown you. So to 31 and 32, to me, sound like um, it's something you can practice throughout the day and they'll reinforce each other, but it takes a little effort, maybe. Yes, yes, exactly. Thank you. Yeah, let's go to together. And uh, this most practitioners, like they always kept that in the mindfully, these words in the mind. Remind Buddha to always be with us and also remind again, again Buddha. So, uh, the reminding or recollection Buddha, then that's also part of meditation. The purify in pure perceptions too. So very important that this recollection of the Buddhas will repeatedly occur. Okay, so some some actually some area is only the talk about the meditation is uh, reminding Buddha. I think recollection of Buddha means reminding, same right? Recollection of Buddha. You think about again. Yeah. So that's also part of the visualization meditation. Practice Yadam deity too. Okay, so no. Kempo, well, I have another thought, <clears throat> and, and I'm ready to read too. Uh -huh. um, on 31 and 32, another way to read it would be um, the, the third line of 32, when it says, also through doing this, it may be you could take that to re refer to the line just before it. As you develop, you know, healthy sense of shame, respect, and fear, that will cause recollection of the Buddha too. And then it isn't quite as um, circular as Sandra was saying. Okay. Word shame, could it be more like remorse for if you did some transactions or is it real shame that you are ashamed of yourself? <laughs> Shamed of ourselves, like, oh, I did it wrong, like means like shamed of ourselves. 
Okay, so, but, but remorse is what in the seven limbs is more remorseful, right? Mm. If we recognize we've done something wrong, like raised our voice in anger. Yeah. I don't really feel ashamed. Yeah. So There's a shame, it's a, like, it's a ritually sense of shame. Some, like culturally, this is like hard, you know, actually. And uh, some cultural shame is like you're pushing yourself down. Yes. You yes. don't have confidence. So that kind of people, you know, think this is in the not really good words. Shame means like ourselves, like try to like kind of pushing down ourselves, uh, lose our courages. So the there's a the many people think that way you know some actually the main point is a shame is a we do something wrong and all buddha bodhisattva is there i promise like i wanted to do good so i did it wrong you know that recognize ourselves and the kind of regret regret again you know doing wrong thing recognize i think regret and remorse is better in english because Shame to me, the first thing that comes to mind is it's against deity pride. Right. So, yeah. Mm. I don't like that word. <laughs> yeah, the way the way it popped out to me, I thought, you know, I keyed on the word shame and I'm thinking, you know, I have good thoughts and bad thoughts, some are some terrible thoughts and 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 to a Buddha or Bodhisattva, they're everything is like an open book they can see everything so that's i'm saying oh oh that's that's something they can see so i need to work on that mm. yeah that's so that's a good way of thing kind of like santa claus he knows when you've been good or bad mm. yeah great <laughs> If someone knows your mind, so you have better thoughts, what do you think? <laughs> That's called shame or yourself shame or what is it like? It's regret. Sometimes it's fear, sometimes it's shame. It's always regret. Yeah, so that's the shame also. The words is there, but it's it's just this depending on how to you receiving information, right? Exactly. Yeah. And as I have a, a, a development of that if healthy shame or remorse, respect and fear, the more I have those qualities, the more likely I'm going to remember the Buddha. Mm. Yeah, this shame words is I also some, I heard some Tibetan or someone says the words is not good, you know, like pushing down ourselves and the people don't, if think that way, then people don't have a, confident and uh, worldly something that thinking about but it's spiritually you think something different than worldly thinking spiritual ways like just ADG says see Buddha this all has omniscience recognize our mind seeing clearly what we're doing so then oh I can if something wrong is our shame you know <laughs> so that kind of way of thing is <clears throat> better okay so now we go to the next one 33 can I, can I ask a question yes please um and i think you answered it i just i just want to make sure i understand when when, you, when we say a uh, recollection of the buddha will repeatedly occur and you said that's our that can also mean our yidam deity practice so that's visualizing the the yidam like at the crown or in the heart or at the navel, is, is that correct? This uh, the, the recollection of the Buddha where repeated in the echo is uh, just uh, like think about uh, like Yadam that is like your mind, right? Bring to your mind and uh, often and often, whatever you're doing, like when you offerings, you know, like me, you eating or you drink something and you offerings and when you walk on the somewhere and the, the visualize Buddha is bring to your mind, visualize the Yadam deities. So that's all is part of that. Recollection of Buddha will repeatedly occur.
Yeah, okay, so now let's go to 33rd. Gail Percy, please, can you read 33rd? Gail? A while to unmute, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to switch screens all the time. You're doing something we cannot recognize. Well, I have to fix my computer. <laughs> anyway, um, 33, when mindfulness is set with the purpose of guarding the doorway of the mind, then alertness will come about and even that which has gone will return. Oh, good. Maybe it'll return. Okay, so the doorway is like a passage. Again, it's this open doorway. Um, that we can really guard it. Um, we can guard it by locking the doorway um, from outside wanderings um, and then really keep up our boundaries, our fortress and um, the alertness will sharpen. And uh, then we'll be back into uh, mindfulness, a very stronger, maybe even a stronger mindfulness. That's how I interpret it. Yes. Great. And it's happy too, because it's, we are always given a second chance. Yes. If you lose like, your mind for illness, then you guide it really correctly where it's coming back again. Mindful, come back again. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyone has a comment? Everyone okay that? Okay, so then we go to the next one. Next is uh, uh, mindful alertness guide the, our conduct. Uh, the conduct followed by the Bodhisattva's conduct is followed by Tiri. So you know that Tiri is like abandoning no virtuous deeds, uh, cultivate, practice virtuous deeds, and uh, benefit for other beings. So this first part is, uh, is uh, abandoned and no virtuous. So like something opposite of the mindful and alertness. So we have to abandon that. 34 uh, is uh, Naomi, can you read? Are you dying or? Yeah, I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't read. Okay, don't read. Okay. Your safety is more important. Thank you. You have so effort. So, Liza, Lewis, can you read the 34? When just as I am about to act, I see that my mind is tainted with defilement. At such a time, I should remain unmovable like a piece of wood. So yeah, this means like when you, you need to check your mind for defilements. And if you, if you observe them, then being still like a piece of wood means, um, you know, just staying in a state of alertness and not not harming other people. Mm. And you need to um, recognize your actions as good or bad. Yes. So first we just load our intention, right? Yes. So your intention is important then just stop what we're we doing action is a stop so must be same as the piece of wood right yes mm. can you do that at times but certainly not all the time <laughs> okay so it's a good expression for us actually we <laughs> doing something we Yes, we do reaction so fast, we don't check our intention. And uh, Shanti Deva give us like 
slow down. He gives stop time for us. Okay. Usually we don't stop. We don't have a traffic light. We don't have a uh, stop signs. So Shanti Deva gave stop signs our mind. If we don't have a stop signs, we get uh, accident. <laughs> so stop sign, then avoid the accident, right? Get accident. Think about that. So it's very good to be thank you to all this. Okay, so now we go to the next 35. 35 is a lich literally stupid L. So L is who is L? Oh, hi. 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 You want me to read 35, Kempo? Yes, yes. Uh, I joined late. Which chapter are we on? Oh, chapter five. Uh, full acceptance of the awakening mind or conscientiousness. I'm not sure which one that is. Chapter five and the 35. Guarding alertness? Yes. Ah. Uh. <clears throat> <clears throat> Never should I look around distractedly for no purpose. With a resolute mind, I should always keep my eyes cast downwards. Okay, can you explain? I was just walking around and uh, I, I couldn't focus on the teachings because I would, mm. I couldn't focus. I was getting distracted by other people in my neighborhood unless I kept my eyes down at, at mm. the phone. That's good. It says never should I love around. <laughs> I felt like I couldn't concentrate. Yeah, that's if why I did. You cannot concentrate, so you have to you don't look to distract your things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The city is too, uh, too yeah. hectic. I find I can only concentrate without my mind being carried away uh, by by looking downwards actually so yeah. okay so anyone has a comment about that if we look to see the object is distracting one reason is distraction second reason is become attached to this object and the desire to the object or the maybe give the aversion arise in the through the object. So that's a re that's the reason Shanti Deva said directly for no purpose. If you don't have really purpose, don't look to the who give you the desire, which object give you the emotions, don't look for that. With a resolute mind, I should always keep my eye cause downwards. I don't want with alertness and mindful. So use the object, the cause arise the emotions. So that kind of any object, Shanti Deva said, don't look. Okay, so then 36, 36. Uh, Kates, uh, you didn't do the right, Kates. Thank you, Kempo. Uh, 36. But in order to relax the gaze, for a short while I should look around, and if someone appears in my field of vision, I should look at him and say, welcome. Um, as you were saying earlier today, it's... Um, if I'm too busy looking down and not paying attention, I could be rude. Um, it's important to um, not be rude. Um, and it's probably good to look around a little bit from time to time to relax the gaze and uh, to see if there's anybody I need to speak to. Mm. Don't try to look to finding someone speak to, right? If someone, someone really needed to help, so speak to you, then no ignored, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for someone to speak to you? You're wanting to give respect is the reason you're looking around. You're not trying to get respect, you're trying to give it. 
Okay. So who going to look to speak to you? Someone looking to speak to you, looking to. <laughs> well, if, if they do, I'm gracious to receive it, but well, I should not have any attachments. If we sometimes we look speak to some other people and they're just looking, right? They're correct or not? Dependent actually, yeah, it's a speak to something, looking to someone, so you have to give some messages, information, so then you have to look to someone to give information to mm -hmm. someone. But when you practice, then you don't have to look someone speak to, right? And if someone need you, then you speak to them, but you don't look to someone speak to. Yes? I think it depends on the situation. Um, yes. You know, sometimes call for showing respect more than others. Yes. If you're walking by somebody on the sidewalk, um, it's really good manners to say hello. If they're on the other side of the street, it's not necessary. Okay. Okay, so kept best, which is a good way. Yeah, just each situation has a different kind. And some you have to responding and say something. Some just okay to let go. If something you don't have to say, let King go is let King go is better. If you talk, you cannot separate easily. <laughs> yes, you stuck there sometimes, people. That's okay. when you walk on the other side of the street when you see the person coming. Mm. Uh, Okay, so then uh, go to the 37, 37 farm, please. Can you read the 37? Yes, Kapo. To check if there is any danger on the path, I should look again and again in the four directions. To rest, I should turn my head around and then look behind me. Uh, so this one, um, Shanta Deva wants us to be very alert and mindful in our surrounding, in all situation. Um, and I think the key is uh, not to be too extreme and rigid, uh, but to be aware on all, all angles. Mm. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Kenpo. Anyone has uh, comments for that? So that's just kept the good conduct. And uh, see this, uh, the Buddha's his followers during that time is all this uh, monks. Actually, we do also in the practice sometimes like really mindful practicing conduct is we cannot look too far away and like talking like other side people everywhere kept very strict and the eyes down the like front and walking you know one by one in the monks you can see sometimes in the temples so that actually followed the mindful uh, we can see sometimes in the like other some country, the the monks follow the baked the food, uh, or it's laying by, you know, and then they don't. Everyone look everywhere. Just you see, all is straight in the same direction, kind of similar, walking very smoothly and peacefully. So if you are doing that way, and then sometimes the danger comes, like Shanti Deva said, you have to look directions, check any danger is there. That time is like elephant, it's crazy elephant, it's India lots. So we have to check here is a car, you know, some people, you know, don't know the dung towers comes and we have to check the car is coming or not, cross the road. So we have to look the directions, check again. Mm. This is why it's, this, this verse addresses people who listen to music when they're walking in traffic. It's very dangerous. You have to be able to hear the horns and not be distracted from paying attention. Uh, 
Yeah, so that's that people is like no alertness, no mindful. Because you you shut down your alertness and mindful, put something into your ear. So actually, who has mindful alertness, even the body is looks like very not seeing anything, like you know, we so kept focusing one way, but actually the avert or the present everything. So that's what you recognize when you meditate. When your mind is kept the focusing something and you have alertness, mind for recognize all presence. So totally different than listening music on the air. Okay, so now we go to the 38. Uh, 38, Amanda, can you read the 38, please? Yes, Kimpo. Having examined both ahead and behind, I proceed to either Uh, it's gone again. Your voice is gone again, Amanda. Sorry, I think my internet connection is not very good. Yeah. My internet. I can call you up, uh, after. So, uh, Senda, can you read that one? 30, which one? 38, right? Um, having examined both ahead and behind, I should proceed to either come or go. Being aware of the necessity for such mindful alertness, I should behave like this in all situations. Um, it's very similar to what we said. Uh, one comment you made was, um, it was similar to when we drive a car, we have to be really mindful, you know, of everything going around us as we drive. Yes. Yeah, that's just very similar. The other 37, 38 is very similar. Okay, so no tone was any. Oh, I just had um, one comment too on 38 that came to me as I was reading that um, earlier. Um, it reminds me a little bit of refraining too, like um, checking my, you know, our mind before we decide to move forward. You know, like, so kind of catching yourself before you, you practicing that mindfulness and saying, is this okay to move forward with this action? Mm -hmm. So similar to driving the car, we drive the car, we know if we're at a stoplight, if it's safe to move forward or not. But if I'm examining my mind and watching my thoughts, is it safe to move forward with that next action? So kind of refraining if it's not. Yes, thank you. Tom, so not Once having prepared for an action with a thought, my body will remain in such a way, then periodically I should look to see how the body is being maintained. Um, I think what he's getting at is that um, once you've made a choice, a thoughtful choice, that your uh, sense of alertness doesn't end there. And that um, you can use your, your body as a, um, like a sounding board in a sense, or a, um, a way to know if you're, if you're mindfully alert. Um, because it'll it'll give a it'll give itself away if you're if you're um, distracted, it'll tense up, it'll um, it'll do something out of the ordinary, and then that's a an alert that says, ah, let me rethink my uh, situation here for a moment. Yes, thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Anyone has any comment to that? So the main point is like checking our body. 
body also does lots of mistakes. So we have to control the body. Your hand is going to cut the tree, so you control the, your hand. <laughs> This reminds me of one time I had to ford a river 15 times mm. with a pack. And so this verse really hit me. <laughs> you really got to be careful, you know, by yourself out in the middle of nowhere, fording a river with a with a 40 pound pack, you know. Mm. So you really got to pay attention to every step and and your balance everything so that just could be yes okay so then uh any have a comment over that understand everything okay then we go to the next one 40 40 is uh maryland police 40 With the utmost effort, I should check to see that the crazed elephant of my mind is not wandering off, but is bound to the great pillar of thinking about Dharma. So we need to keep mindful awareness of what our mind is doing, our thoughts, and bring it in, hold it steady to think about the Dharma instead of just going, following thoughts everywhere, running around like a crazy elephant. Yes. This whole section is about watching our mind to have our body and speech in sync with our mind, I think. Yeah. So that we uh, have to create the minds to put in the in the Dharma practice. Right. To the great pillar of thinking about the Dharma. Yeah. Yeah. So, we... um, the usually people does like mind is too much going on there, listening music or watching the TV. And uh, so that kind of doesn't help actually, you know, temporarily you forget, but it's come back again and not really transforming your mind, it's your problem is still there. So if you put practice in your mind and then really uh, effected in your mind is it can transform, your mind, crazy mind is can subdued and transform. Mm. We have to think everything is Dharma. Yes. Okay, so now we go to the 41. 41 EDG. Okay, 41. Those who strive by all means for concentration should not wander off even for a moment. But by thinking, how is my mind behaving, they should closely analyze their mind. So, so the notes I made on that, continue to monitor my mind. How am I doing? Check, continually check, closely analyze the mind. And the other note mm -hmm. I made was point in, not out. I forget what that meant. Vidyas. Keep looking at yourself rather looking within rather than looking for outside to the problem is within, not without. Mm. So I think that relates to how is my mind behaving? Yes, sir. You oh. have to in the by thinking how is my mind behaving, checking, you know, only mind. Yes. Close to the analyze their mind. We analyze our mind. Usually we analyze other people's mind. We analyze other people's behalf. So Shanti Devas, analyze your mind, analyze your behalf. Put effort. And means 
like the, those who starve by all means for concentration should not wonder of in even a moment. Don't think about others, just keep subdued your charisma. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we go to the... This, um, oh, I was just going to say, this verse reminded me of Garcha Rinpoche of the 37 practices. He often says this one, what's the state of your mind with constant mindfulness and mental alertness, practice others good, you know? So mm -hmm. it, it reminded me of that, you know, that kind of that bodhisattva. Yeah. Oh, same, yeah, same. And uh, 37 Bodhisattva is actually always come from this way of a Bodhisattva. You can see, right now, yeah? Recognize. Mm. So now, yeah, 42, Debe A. Debe A. <laughs> That's you, Debbie Connor. I'm Debbie B. No, I'm Debbie. No, I'm Debbie C. <laughs> okay, 42. But if I am unable to do this when afraid or involved in celebrations, then I should relax. Likewise, it has been taught that at times of giving, one may be indifferent to certain aspects of moral discipline. And the thing I really like about this chapter is he's telling you how to live the rest of your life. Like literally, if you follow these instructions and do it 100%, you'll become a bodhisattva. Uh, so it's really interesting. It's a, a very interesting chapter. But what this means is either when you're experiencing like a strong emotion of fear, you can suspend the sort of the rules a little bit and deal with the fear. And the object of the fear is usually afraid of something that you need to take care of. Or if you're, you know, if you're at a party, relax and eat. And uh, in those sorts of situations, you have a little bit of leeway for not keeping up the alertness, but you also have to remember that you don't get attached to, you know, enjoy things, but don't attached or desirous of, you know, things you know, you can loosen up a little bit. Don't just be all So we have breathe air, right? Can breathe your air. You no. can relax yourself. I don't understand the second, the third and the fourth line. Okay. Third and the fourth line. Oh, so Senda, can you give answer third and the fourth lane? No, not really. Oh, really? No. I, I think I can. Okay. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it just, we just need to take a break, relax. Mm. It's like, you know, sometimes we let, Sometimes we we become a little lax on the discipline, but we still need to be mindful. But but it's nice to relax. Mm. Well, what's that, what about what's that about giving? What's that about at times of giving? It, you're giving somebody those, a present or what? <laughs> at those times of giving, then you want to be. Sometimes you have to be indifferent and. To, to certain aspects of moral discipline, which means take a break. <laughs> take a break for what? <laughs> giving what? What are you talking about? I don't understand times of giving. I don't feel like giving. I want to take a break. Okay. Oh, um, your so Tom B's theory. I mean, instead, I mean, of instead of giving, you just take a break from giving. Okay. Yes. Okay. If that's me. I'm, I'm. I thought it was more like Christmas, or you're throwing somebody a party. Okay. It's so the acts of generosity, you know, giving out like sweets or you know Christmas presents gifts people don't need, or throwing a party. You're going to eat too much. Amanda, can you explain? 
I, I think it means, I think generosity could mean different things. So it could be maybe going to someone's anniversary party or, um, or Christmas or we celebrate Christmas, <laughs> giving gifts, birthdays. Um, so I think um, moral discipline would be is that conduct where um, if, if you're trying to be quiet, you're trying to be very alert, um, like Shanti Dewa said in the previous verse, um, if you need to, to kind of hold that meditative gaze, to not be distracted, you can relax that so that you can, um, you can enjoy being with others um, but you still have mindful alertness. Is that correct, Kimpo? Yeah, yeah, it's a correct, yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. I just, I just found the um, Padmakara translation. It makes a lot more sense. But those two lines I'm confused about, it reads, for it is taught that rules of discipline may be relaxed in times of generosity. Uh -huh. Okay, so this has been told that at time of giving means like we have a generosity, we have a moral ethic too, right? Morality too. So when you get in the party or something like re ready to giving things like generosity time. So you just let go your moral ethic conduct keeping so strong, you know? Like example, maybe Halloween comes and you can give the candies for kids and make them happy and wear something, you know? And uh, so like rather than you just stay like this. <laughs> so Kempo. make them happy and- uh, Kempo, uh, I remember that the His Holiness, the Dalai Lama in giving empowerments and teaching sometimes, he does yeah. a lot of joking to make it sort of fun and festive and joyous. So he yeah. might put on somebody's baseball cap instead of his crown or yeah, do so that's silly also, things. That's also part of that, see? I, I think this morning you explained, Kempo, that, uh, you, know, we, um, you know, we practice and everything, but there's once in a while, we don't have to be so rigid. Like, for example, we need to be at a certain place to participate in a certain event or family program. So we should be a little bit relaxed and not always be serious and grim, but be with others. Uh, that is also part of our practice uh, when we can. Um, so in other words, middle way, not too rigid, not too extreme. Uh, too serious is too extreme and too relaxed is also too extreme. I think that's what this morning I kind of remember with that you said. I'm not sure if yeah, that's the whole thing. The important is like, keep the Shanti Devas in mind for illness, but you know, long as you really not create a desire and, uh, you know, attachment, anger, something, using the object that just you enjoy, you know enjoy and you you use like something generosity time and like you use like giving things enjoy you know so that's the, that's the same thing we can do like sometimes like you can right now see if shanti deva is this time he said you don't have to be in the temple everyone to listen and teach and you can come in the zone stay at your where you are you know, even you don't have to cross a leg, you can just sit like some easy, you know, and uh, so you can sit in the chair or in the bed and listening to teaching. So sometimes like when you, time is, it comes like that, you can do that. So time comes, you can do that. You know, if you have time to come to temple, you can listening to teaching, you have all these opportunities, then you stay home, you're doing things incorrect, right? So there's a time comes, it's like, it's like kind of a more information has been told that at time of giving me time. Some, sometimes like you cannot into that, but you can do, do something different ways. Okay. Can you take one more comment? Yes. 
<clears throat> um, it says when afraid or involved in celebrations. And I was gonna make a comment about when afraid. Uh, of course, Shanti Dev wasn't thinking of driving 75 miles per hour on a highway, but I think that that might be a situation in that similar line of, of thinking when afraid. So we, there's levels of mindfulness that you can relax a little bit when you're driving on a major highway, especially if you're somewhere around Detroit where the driving is pretty tricky. Mm. Yes. So mm. this uh, Jake is is okay. Jake is too bad. It's a uh, af afraid when afraid or involved in celebration. So see when you have scared something, then you also have to care for right. So you be is like focused for conduct and uh, you don't just like follow the generosity. If you uh, think about in the coronavirus, in the crowded, so you just giving things like hand to others is incorrect. You just keep your distance, stay distance. Yeah, because it's afraid it's like, you know, affected like this virus. And uh, you don't have that, then you can giving things like even you don't keep distance, like distance, we kept the distinction is like more moral effect. And uh, you you just don't this keep you don't keep the distinctions, and then you're giving things like hand shaking, everything, you know, hug and the handshake is is uh, not keeping distance, right? It's like when you have like say coronavirus, you cannot do the handshakes, you cannot hug and keep this tension. So when you have fred, you you stay that way. So that means if you don't fred, then you can handshake, you can hug. <laughs> so not all the time. Sometimes you can do the due to the time. Due to the time. Mm. So example like due to the time and uh, the when public talks and the when teach at the dharma center is a little bit we make different this is a due to the time due to the time due to the culture we make something different you know so that's always followed by the culture and the time but but uh, uh, Main point is always keep mindful alertness, no create causes of the desire and the causes of the anger. So long as you don't do that and uh, you can use other things, change. Okay, so thanks very much. And then we go to the next one. Uh, next one, 42, right? Oh no, 43. Evie, yeah, can you read 43? I should undertake whatever deed I have intended to do and think of doing other than it. With my mind applied to the task, I should set about for the time being to accomplish it. So it's like one pointedness when you're doing whatever you're doing. It's not always so easy to do. So. Mm. So you kept the one is focus, yeah. If you don't keep the focus one, then what happened? Well, I was drawing up. I had to break of a, a, a glass vial to draw up some medicine the other day, and it was such a cha difficult, chaotic day. I couldn't. I could not. I couldn't keep my mind on the task. Um, so I just shattered the. I shattered it. I. The medicine was lost. I almost got cut. It was not good. <laughs> but usually I can focus. But I was, you know, I lost my the discipline in my mind because I got caught up in emotions earlier and could not focus. So I I lost the medicine and I almost cut myself. 
Mm. So Mary, do you have any explain that? Well, she's right, you know, if you don't get it done. <laughs> if yes. you put your mind on what you're doing, do it, it's done. If you don't do it, you won't accomplish it. Okay. Then can you read the 40 next one? Okay. By acting in this way, all will be done well. But by acting otherwise, neither action will be done. Likewise, there will be no increase in the proximate disturbing conceptions that come from a lack of awareness. Mm. So it's saying that if you act like that, keeping your mind on what you're doing, you will be able to finish it and accomplish that action and do it well. Um, this is kind of an awkward word, no increase in proximate disturbing conceptions, um, which I'm guessing means emotions, <laughs> okay? There will be no increase in emotional conceptions, et cetera, that come from a lack of, an, of awareness. So if you lose your focus and all of a sudden you're like blaming yourself, oh, I should have been more aware and all this other kind of stuff, then um, that also disturbs you. You sort of blame yourself for your lack of focus or mm. it creates other emotions that then you have to cope with them too. Okay, good, thank you. The 45 DBB. Uh, I Oh, okay. If I happen to be present while a senseless conversation is taking place, or if I happen to see some kind of spectacular show, I should abandon attachment towards it. Um, so I, if I heard you correctly, Kempo, with this one, you um, said that it's about being keeping that mindful alertness and looking at our outer circumstances kind of like as it's dreaming so that you ha you don't develop a desire or attachment to the things that you're seeing and uh, recognize it as a delusion, recognize it as a dream. And so in this way, then um, we will remain present and we will not abandon that mindful mental alertness, not getting too excited, not getting too, uh, overly excited about objects and actions that are happening. Thank you. Mm. So what it means a senseless conversation? Talk lots, yeah? Yeah, it's a lot of talk. <laughs> Don't be talking a lot. <laughs> to keep maintain that mental alertness with your speech as well. Yes. Thank you, it's, that's great. 44, 46, 46, uh, Thomas, Phyllis. Yes, Captain. If for no reason I start digging the earth, picking at the grass or drawing patterns on the ground, then by recalling the advice of the Buddhas, I should immediately step out of fear. The notes I have are, everything should be done for a reason. Be mindful of your action at all times. Recalling, recalling the advice of the Buddhas. So when you were explaining this, we were saying that uh, cutting down trees or mowing the grass, that we are cultivating uh, non-virtuous uh, actions by right? killing and doing things that we shouldn't be doing. But um, we should always be aware of our conduct and be aware of what we're doing at all times. Be mindful. Yes. So this is related to the, I think more is for keeping the environment, right? 
yes. This, uh, this uh, when you talk about the the monks and the nuns cannot like dig the dig the the you know earth and also when the grass is cut so you don't cut on the field. But ordinary people just more important is like not too much destroying the environment. Desire. People have so much desire destroying environment. So that's the it's incorrect to so the need. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, this um just a, another side thing that came to my mind when we read this earlier today was that it, it kind of reminded me about not wasting your life away because we have kind of these habitual on a more inner level we have these habitual patterns like you just sit down and mindlessly just pull grass and pick grass and draw things kind of like doodling on paper you know and if we continue to do that without the awareness that we're even creating those actions not only are we like thomas said harming beings and not following that but we're also just like kind of um instilling those habitual patterns and we're wasting time yeah exactly yes yes Maybe i had that same idea but i also had the idea of doing that is in an avoidance sometimes it's a procrastination or an avoidance and that gets with the fear aspect because sometimes when we don't want to face a really big task, we procrastinate and run away from it and hide under the rug. That's, a, yes, that's a good point. I like that too. I think it's a typo. It should be stop, not step. There are plenty of typos in this thing. Okay, good. Thank you, everyone. Next is a uh, 40. Seven, right? Forty-seven. Yeah, forty-seven. As uh, Cartes, please forty-seven. Whenever I have the desire to move my body or to say something, first of all, I should examine my mind, and then, with steadiness, act in the proper way. Um. Well, if the desire is. A, a acceptable desire. I will know that after I examine it. And then I can proceed in a steady way to act. Um, but I have to examine my mind if my desire to, to say something or to do something with my body is, is not proper. Mm -hmm. Okay, so great. Then next, sir. Uh... We go to the 48, 48. Uh, Amanda, can you chant 48? Yes. Whenever there is attachment in my mind and whenever there is the desire to be angry, I should not do anything nor say anything, but remain like a piece of wood. I think this is very helpful. Um, so um, first we have to realize what we're doing and, and see that emotion as it arises. Um, and then just don't do anything, just stop. And um, I know in an, another verse you said, um, a peaceful, being like a peaceful piece of wood is better than acting on these things. It's much better. I thought that was really lovely. Um, so it's better to be the peaceful piece of wood. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so that's good suggestion so we want to be peace of wood okay when we get anger and attachment something next uh, 49 for 49 david can you chant the 49 lead the 49 make simple yes sir 49 it was going together with the 50, but whatever I have distracted thought, the wish to verbally be little others, feeling of self importance or self satisfaction. When I have the intention to disguise the fault of others, temptation and the thoughts to deceive others. 
it's related with pride. It's, it, you know, you want to say bad things to people or feel more important because you put other people lower and you have to avoid that. You, you have to control yourself and don't do that. It's more that you are recognized. You, you pray, you try to be higher than others and diminish other people and avoid to do that. And then feeling became really effective. Did I hear did I were you was somebody did you mention me? Yeah, yeah. What what okay, I didn't I didn't hear voice. I should okay. be what forty or 50? 50, yes. Okay. Whenever I am eager for praise or have the desire to blame others, whenever I have the wish to speak harshly and cause dispute, at all such times I should remain like a piece of wood. Mm. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so here, if if I'm alert and mindful, and I I can see, I can determine what what my intention is, and if my intention is praise, blaming others, or speaking harshly, that's when I should become the piece of wood, not do anything. Yes. Can you do that? <laughs> Sometimes, yes. That's good. Okay. So no, 51, 51, 51 is... Uh, Tom Wazani, can you chant, read 51? Okay. Whenever I desire material gain, honor, or fame, whenever I seek attendance or a circle of friends, and when my mind I wish to be, and when in my mind I wish to be served, at all these times I should remain like a piece of wood. Um, well, he, so again, he's um, coming at it from a slightly different angle um, of um, desiring something. And because he has so good self-awareness that um, when he notices this, that he says that you should remain like a piece of wood. So he's giving advice basically at all those good observant moments that we're having. Mm. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. 42. Leech. Oh, uh, it's pronounced Lachlan. Oh, oh Lachlan. Yeah, I have so much issue with these piece of wood ones, Kempo. Like, <laughs> what if you want to make friends? Like, you, you need friends. You need spiritual friends, right? Yeah. But if you want to go meet them, you have to remain like a piece of wood. So first you check your intention. So mm -hmm. it's like you, you have this kind of like pride, attachment, desire, or this emotions like increasing, you're looking for that, causes of that, and then just be a piece of wood. Otherwise you can have Well, I mean, it would be a desire to have friends. Is, is there no such thing as a, as a healthy desire? I mean, even enlightenment is, or, you know, study or contemplation is oh, a desire. A, okay. It's, it's a way. Mm. Could be also regarded like a queen bee. A queen bee gathers syncophants around her 
and orders them around to elevate herself. And it's very unhealthy for teenage girls to be lured into a circle of a queen bee in uh, middle school. But you don't mean actual bees, right? Excuse me? I see you don't mean, it's like, I've never heard of that expression before. But queen bee, oh, it's very, it's like mean girls. <laughs> <laughs> it happens a lot in schools. <laughs> All right, now that's just a new one on me. So this is like this, okay, a sick attain, attain dance or a sicker of friend means like everyone is like your red nose. Exactly, that's you, a queen bee. Yeah, you control them. You want to control everyone, say, okay, go to get these people, take down these people, like gang people does, right? The, the Thank you, yes. Yeah. If you're doing like virtuous deeds and the sangha and the meeting, helping others, like just regular ordinary friends, then not talking about this is like you create, uh, you know, causes of suffering for others and ourselves. Uh, I see. What about what, like, is it okay to be angry if the person you're angry at isn't there? Like, can you just? It's like release the anger with what? other people or on your own or something. Can you say again? Uh, you're angry at someone who who you're not with. So who is not with you angry means? Um, you're talking about venting and uh, venting your anger out and releasing. Yeah. Yeah, like, should you only remain like a piece of wood um, so you don't, you know, hurt someone? But what if, what if they make you angry, but then, but then you leave and, and get angry at them when you're not with them? I think venting can increase your habitual pattern of anger. You're reinforcing the thought in your mind that that person did you harm instead of transforming it into mm. passion for their bad behavior, if you see it that way. Exactly. I think especially if you vent with other people, it really reinforces it as well because you're trying to get someone else on your side, which reinforces your, your self-clinging and your ego, I think. And it can create some anger in someone else. Good points. Okay, then good, good. Can you read the next one, Lee? Uh, yes, uh, 52. Yes. Whenever I have the wish to decrease or to stop working for others and the desire to pursue my welfare alone. If motivated by such thoughts, a wish uh, to say something occurs, at these times I should remain like a piece of wood. So whenever you sort of start having selfish desires rather than working for others, mm. you should stop it and uh, keep serving others. Yes. Okay. So then 43, 43. Uh, Lisa, can you read 43? It's whenever, 43. whenever I have impatience, laziness, cowardness, shamelessness, or the desire to talk nonsense, if thoughts of partiality arise, at these times too, I should remain like a piece of wood. So uh, just don't give in to those kind of um, very, very bad habits. Mm. So if, if you do give in to it, um, you'll decrease your practice. 
it's more inward, I think, than outward. That. Yes. So anyone has a comment about this? Reminds me of um, impulsive people too. They speak before they think. Mm. Um, in some other translation, they they talk about the piece of wood, but instead of piece of wood, they said, be still like a tree, like a tree that is grounded. And sometimes in some verse, it makes kind of sense, you know, be still and do not move, do not follow. Would, would that make sense? Because every time I think a piece of wood, I think of a blockhead <laughs> and then that doesn't work. <laughs> or, or, you know, in Asian, you know, we said wood head, wooden head, you know, like dodo, stupid. And so it just, it just gave me this wrong idea <laughs> or wrong, uh, you know meaning so uh, there's another one that it say that it's it's like you're you're be still like a tree like a plant tree you know and and not be shaken something like that does does that is that what it um was in the tibetan translation temple because sometimes i see wood. different version wood wood only wood yeah. In British Columbia, they sometimes say a two by four. Don't be a two by four. <laughs> what means a two by four? A blockhead, a two by four. <laughs> it's a plank that's two feet by four feet. <laughs> I see. Okay, so now the next one, then this is okay, right, everyone? 43 is okay. 43 is a little bit harder, more explain, but it's a, it's also like just we keep simple ways. Okay, you what you write the thing. It's also they can follow by participation, effort, you know, and this follow some of this uh, we parameters. Uh, so now then for 44, girl, please, can you do the 54, 54, sorry, 54. 54. 54, 54 says, um, having in this way examined his mind for disturbing conceptions and for thoughts that strive for meaningless things, the courageous Bodhisattva should hold his mind steady through the application of remedial forces. Okay, so here we are, a situation where um, you're having disturbing thoughts and attitudes, and they're, they're quite pointless. You're, you're not thinking about important things, really important things. So a courageous bodhisattva should really fortify your mind, hold the mind steady, um, and use all the remedial forces, all the different um, applications of uh, good attitudes and uh, um, I can't remember the word <laughs> that we always use. Somebody help me. Remedial forces. What's the synonym for that? Antidote? Antidote, thank you. I just had a senior moment. <laughs> so the antidotes, we need all of our antidotes at work and choose the, the best one. And if that doesn't work, you can choose another one. So the main point is uh, when emotions and uh, not important disturbing comes, so then we have to put effort, right? to use the, our mind for awareness, I think, and uh, subdued these emotions. Interdot, right? Use interdot to emotion. Uh, 
Okay, so the, I think we finished it there today, right? Yeah, 54, we finish it there. Thanks everyone. So we're going to we do the dedication. ABG, please, can you chant the dedication prayer? Sure. I had to find the mute button. E Maho, in the center is a marvelous Buddha, Amitabha, boundless light. On the right side is a Lord of great compassion. And on the left is Vajrapani, the Lord of powerful means. All are surrounded by limitless Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Immeasurable peace and happiness is the blissful pure land of Dewa Chen. When I and all beings pass from samsara, may we be born there without taking samsaric rebirth. May I have the blessing of meeting Amitama face to face. By the power of the blessings of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions, may we attain this aspiration without hindrance. Peyata pensadriya awa bodhanaya soha. Bodhicitta, the excellent and precious mind, where it is unborn, may it arise. Where it is born, may it not decline, but ever increase, higher and higher. By this virtue, may I achieve omniscience by defeating all enemies, confusion. May all who travel on the waves of birth, old age, sickness, and death cross the ocean of samsara. As Manjushri, the warrior, realized the ultimate state, and as did Samantabhadra, I will follow in their path and fully dedicate all the merit for all sentient beings. May the teachings of the great Drugumpa Ratnashri, who is omniscient Lord of the Dharma, master of interdependence, continue and increase through study, practice, contemplation, and meditation until the end of samsara. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Campo. Thank, Thank you, Campo. Thank you everyone. Thank you. That was Hasta great. mañana. That was really great. Thanks. <laughs> I understand that one. That's for you.